Wouldn't it be cool to live in a world where you could just do everything yourself? A world where you never had to rely on anyone else. A world where game after game you'd gain rating and there was nothing anyone could do about it. Well, lucky for you, we're here to tell you this world exists. Well, it exists for some people. There are some classes in Dragonflight that are just absolute behemoths when it comes to their carry potential, and weirdly enough, a few classes have been actually flying under the radar so far. That's why today we're going to bring them into the spotlight to tell you the best 1v3 classes that you could be using to dominate Solo Shuffle. Some of these classes are just unkillable monsters, while others output absurd damage that makes it near impossible for the enemy team to adapt to. Remember, with all the new information added to Dragonflight though, every class is only as good as the person using it. Although these specs have crazy carry potential, you're definitely not going to be able to just face roll, at least not with all of them. If only there was a place that could teach you everything. Over at Skillcapped, we've got you covered with the best Dragonflight guides on the internet. With our world-class coaches full of multiple rank 1 players, we've invested the time at the start of this expansion to make sure every class is covered. With how fast it is to level alt in Dragonflight 2, this is even more valuable because with just one subscription, you could master multiple classes in a very short amount of time. Not only that, but the entire site is backed by our rank improvement guarantee, meaning if you don't actively improve while using our service, you'll get your money back no questions asked. Oh, and what's that? You also get access to all of our Wrath PvP guides too? What are you waiting for? Come check out Skillcapped and we'll see you there. For now, let's get started with our first class though, our number one killing machine, Feral Druids. Right now, Feral is ripping and tearing its way through the solo ladder thanks to, well, Rip. Yes, Feral's sustained pressure is absolutely insane right now due to AoE Rip, which is applied with Primal Wrath. Every Feral Druid licks their lips for the right moment to hit as many targets with this ability, and if it manages to land on three or more players, or even pets, the damage output is quite absurd. There's no denying that Feral Druid damage output is strong, but it's joined by unrelenting control. It cannot be argued that Feral has some of the best CC in the game thanks to their multiple stuns, which give it a unique edge at both denying pressure from the enemy team and applying pressure in deep dampening. Together, this is coupled with high damage mitigation, both from bark skin and survival instincts, but also the act of simply being in bear form, which give it multiple ways at slowing down enemy damage at various stages of the game. Although Feral healing does get dramatically nerfed around the two minute mark, it still has almost complete reign over its opponents for the first minute of the game, where its sustained damage output can be absolutely lethal when combined with other AoE damage specs. One of those specs are Rhett Paladins, who are quickly taking the ladder by Divine Storm after a series of buffs in early January. If you were scratching your head wondering why, then allow us to show you what Rhett Paladin burst currently looks like. Oh my god. Mystic. <gasps> my man got a double kill. After a series of buffs on January 9th, Rhett Paladin damage seems on par with Divine Toll Burst from early Shadowlands. This makes Rhett Paladin fully capable of actually winning the game by itself every minute by stacking huge modifiers to pump up Final Reckoning and Radiant Decree damage. This is actually something we showcased in one of our Master in Minutes courses before the season actually started, and now with Rhett Paladin buffs, people are starting to see why Rhett is potentially broken. But its damage alone isn't just why Rhett Paladin is perfect for solo carrying games. Rhett has some of the best hybrid utility in the bracket, including Blessing of Sanctuary to break teammates out of stuns, Sacrifice to reduce damage, Freedoms to keep their team mobile, and of course, Blessing of Protection to counter some of the deadliest forms of damage in the bracket. When you combine this with their instant cast off healing, Rhett is well equipped to handle each stage of the game. And now, with key damage nerfs to some of the previously high tier ranged classes in the bracket, Rhett Paladin are in a much better place for carrying their team in solo shuffle. Next up, we have two healers on our list, with the first one being really good at, well, healing. Resto Druids are absolutely crushing it across every rating bracket, due entirely to their unmatched single target healing output. A full row of hots with Scenarian Ward is enough to outheal most sources of sustained damage in Solo Shuffle, all while the Resto Druid is able to sit at max range, pumping out heals the entire game. This is what truly sets it apart from other healers. Resto Druids are absolute monsters at dishing out heals in the back line, all while being able to easily avoid CC or swaps thanks to travel form. And whenever healing starts getting intense, tree form is an absolutely broken cooldown. Not only does it increase healing output by 15%, but it also makes regrowth instant. And thanks to the Scenarius Guidance passive, most of these regrowths will cost zero mana since druids get free clear casting procs while tree is active. Together, this means rest of druids can get ahead on mana while also making their team immortal during the 30 second window of incarnation. 
The only thing Druid lacks as a healer is the ability to play offensive, and instead, it performs best when being as safe as possible. So if you are a fan of pumping out heals and want to feel rewarded for empowering your team to play aggressive, Resto Druid is for you. Coming up next, we have another healing class, which is capable of carrying the game on offense and defense. Can you believe some people actually thought Evoker was going to be bad going into Dragonflight? This spec is busted. They have some of the highest healing output in the game from only a handful of spells, the majority of it being instant thanks to Echo and Reversion. Preservation is also really well equipped at healing AoE damage, with the combination of Echo, Verdant Embrace, and Dream Breath, which combined will heal multiple targets for a huge amount, allowing them to easily keep multiple targets topped in solo shuffle. We have we haven't even gotten to the good stuff yet though. One of the reasons evokers fare so well as a 1v3 type class is because of the amount of answers they have to damage spikes throughout each round. Time dilation is their most efficient cooldown at responding to burst damage and will flatten out the massive damage spikes that are otherwise unhealable. As far as dealing with huge AoE damage in CC, evokers are definitely well equipped in that department, with Emerald Communion not only doing massive AoE healing, but also being usable while in multiple forms of CC, making it one of the most broken abilities in the entire game currently. Honestly, evokers are probably over budgeted with defensive cooldowns, which when combined with their efficient instant cast heals means they rarely need to hard cast anything at all, even having a panic button that automatically activates. Wait, did we say panic button? This is actually a passive. That's right, when your allies drop below 20% HP, you'll automatically just get a second healer to help out. Even though this may seem minor, it simply means having the ability to deny a kill by doing absolutely nothing. You may think that with all of this healing output, they're a relatively easy target to take down, but that's not really the case. With two breath abilities, evokers are able to reposition across the map, all while being completely immune to CC while midair. And when they land, they're instantly able to port back to where they started with recall. When you combine all this with hover, they are incredibly slippery. Even if you do manage to catch up to them, they're likely to have nullifying shroud up already to immune the next three CCs, or can simply emerald communion through various CC chains if that's not the case. We could go on and on about the depth of their toolkit but basically our point is you can't really kill them and you can't really kill their allies so it's kind of a lose-lose going up against a preservation evoker we did name off a lot of abilities here so many of you may feel a bit overwhelmed the thing is most of these abilities while they are very powerful they also have some sort of cooldown meaning that their healing patterns aren't very global intensive this luckily is more of a blessing than a curse, since that means they won't have to sit around casting all the time. Instead, they can use this time to dish out damage with abilities like Disintegrate, Fire Breath, or disrupt their targets using Tail Swipe, Wing Buffet, and Quell. Their damage isn't something to be scoffed at either. Since Fire Breath can actually act as an AoE dispel, capable of removing several buffs across multiple targets when fully channeled. When combined with their long duration CC, this is more than enough to contribute to kills and means preservation evokers check all the boxes when it comes to healer specs. Damage and CC, check. High healing output, check. Hard to kill, check. We said it before and we'll say it again, it's crazy that people thought this class was going to be bad. They are incredible. Speaking of mixed reactions, Elemental Shaman is another spec that many people doubted preseason. After nerfs to some of the previous damage lords in the bracket, Ellie Shamans are showing everyone just how much their damage profile is able to shine in the solo bracket. This happens in two different waves, literally. The first is with Primordial Wave or Ascendance, which allows both of them to cleave multiple targets with Lava Burst. When this is combined with enough modifiers, this AoE Lava Burst damage is enough to chunk multiple health bars at the same time. The second wave of damage comes with Stormkeeper, which won't do AoE damage but will help take down a single target with back-to-back -back Lightning Bolts, each with their own damage modifiers. When this is combined with an Earth Shock Execute, Elemental Shamans can instantly score kills on unsuspecting targets if they high roll their RNG. This slot machine spec is also quite disruptive, with a low C ranged interrupt combined with not one but two different knockback effects. This makes Elemental Shaman incredibly annoying for every opponent. Whether it's shutting down casts with Wind Shear and Grounding Totem, kiting enemy melee with Earth Grab Root and Ghost Wolf, or simply setting up kills with Lightning Lasso, there isn't a dull moment for Elemental Shaman. Its only true drawback is its relatively weak defensive toolkit, where it can get easily overwhelmed when trained. Without any complete damage immunities, Shamans are quite vulnerable in stuns when Trinket isn't available. Its primary true defensive is the fact that it deals so much AoE pressure that enemy opponents sometimes don't have the ability to push into the shaman in the first place. Let's shake things up a little bit with a class that was recently nerfed but still fully capable of carrying the game. Although they received some nerfs to both their passive defense and sustained damage, Shadow Priests are still capable of unloading an incredible amount of burst. 
Abilities like Shadow Crash, Damnation, and Unfurling Darkness allow them to get dots up on a target utilizing instant cast abilities, and when you couple this with instant cast procs to Mind Blast or Mind Spikes, Shadow Priests can sustain momentum out of the gate without needing to hard cast. While they have high consistent damage output, you may start to notice a trend here, they also have an insane amount of burst on a very short 1 minute cooldown coming from their Dark Ascension and Mind Bender, meaning they can force out all of your defensives very quickly. They also have some excellent damage abilities on a 45 second cooldown, such as Siphene to apply an MS effect and Mind Games to counter healing which will just put out an unreasonable amount of pressure for healers to deal with when used alongside Dark Ascension. Although Siphene can be killed and probably should be, in Solo Shuffle that is quite rare since there is limited communication, meaning an ability like this is able to get more value. Other than that, they have other annoying talents like Void Volley, but we won't get too much into those, just know they can be very obnoxious. At the end of the day, damage is damage though, so what else do they bring to the table? Well, for one, they have one of the most frustrating mechanics to deal with in any game, known as Instant CC. Their bread and butter combo of Psychic Horror and Silence continues to allow Shadow Priests to effortlessly contribute to kills with minimal communication. Just like Demon Hunter CC combos, all this is both instant and usable from range, making it quite easy to land. So they've got the CC and they've got the damage, what about survivability? Well, despite what you might think, just being Shadow doesn't actually remove any of the other utility that make Priests strong. They can still mass dispel, they can still leap of faith, they can still power ward shield, basically shadow priests bring everything you could possibly need to the table to support your healer, meaning they are easily one of the best 1v3 classes you can play in the game. If you've been debating on picking up shadow priests this expansion, wait no longer, you won't regret it. Before we wrap things up, let's finish off with another ranged spec who is capable of tearing through health bars. Let's make one thing clear though, even though Arcane Mage is strong, it is one of the hardest specs to play at a high level. A good mage is capable of carrying their team, but an inexperienced mage might struggle to climb. With that said, Arcane Mage is an incredibly well-rounded spec, able to carry the game on the back of its diverse toolkits. For one, Arcane Mages are one of the deadliest casters when allowed to freely channel spells. With Arcane Surge cooldown stacking, mages are able to tear through enemy health bars almost instantly unless interrupted. And thanks to recycled legendary abilities from Shadowlands, Arcane is still threatening outside of its CDs, with Barrage acting as a pseudo-execute, meaning you never want to find yourself low against an Arcane Mage. Their offensive power is balanced with their defensive capabilities, where Arcane is actually quite tanky thanks to a combination of two things. The first is mobility. Combining multiple blinks with Novas and Chrono Shift Snares, a good Arcane Mage is able to zone out enemy melee with ease, as long as it keeps the mobility closer advantage. And when enemy melee are able to connect, Alter Time is able to completely block kills no matter what level of dampening since the HP rewind isn't lowered by any healing reduction effects. With Ice Block as a last resort cooldown, Arcane Mages become fairly tanky and are able to even deal damage while kiting with Arcane Missiles. This puts teams in a bind when up against Arcane Mages. If you try and shut down their damage, you're gonna get kited all game, but let them free cast and it's gonna be a GG. As always though, let us know what classes you think should be on this list. Dragonflight is shaping up really great so far, and we're super excited to see how the first season plays out. If you're really looking to take your game to the next level in this new expansion though, remember we have already put in countless hours into establishing the best guides you can find on the internet for Dragonflight, all available over at Skillcap. We have some of the very best coaches in the game teaching every single class, so regardless of what you're maining in Dragonflight, you'll be able to take over the competition. This is especially valuable with Solo Shuffle becoming a new game mode, allowing players to showcase their true potential on their own without really having to rely on teammates at all. As always, our whole service is backed by our generous rank improvement guarantee, meaning that it's literally no risk to you. Come on over to Skillcap and we'll get you ranking up in no time. Aside from that though, that's all we got. We all here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching, and we will catch you in the next one.